Welcome back to End Time Prophet Judge. My name is Pastor Mike Garcia with Shadow Ministries from uh, Los Angeles, California, or East LA, also known as the City of Angels. Um, as we are preparing for Passover, the last couple of weeks, giving a little bit of church history on why there has been a division between Passover and Easter and, and the traditions and whatnot. Um, We'll pick up from there. I was coming from the driving from the west side, uh, coming back to church today, and I, I looked to my left and I saw a church, and uh, uh, they were in a uh, parking lot with a bunch of palms. I'm like, what are they doing? I said, oh, that's right. They're going to celebrate Palm Sunday this Sunday because next Sunday they'll celebrate Easter. Which I always tell people, um, make sure you ask your pastors or your priest or whoever to explain Palm Sunday about it uh, and where it's at in the Bible because uh, you won't be able to find it. This is the, the beautiful thing about the festivals, the Lord's festivals. Um, in, uh, actually, I have it here. Matthew chapter 23, verse 39, is that, uh, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This was the Lord coming in with a donkey, and they would put palm branches down. Now they call it Palm Sunday. But if you understand the Lord's festivals, in the book of Leviticus, let's go to the book of Leviticus real quick, 23, Chapter 23, there's seven, there's eight festivals. Of course, we know there's the, the Sabbath, the weekly festival. Then there's seasonal festivals, which we're approaching. There's uh, Pesach, which is Passover, which is going to happen this coming week. Uh, Hag HaMatzah, which is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Hag HaPikurim, which is the Feast of First Fruits. All those take place on the 14th, 15th of Nisan, which, or the first month, the beginning of months. Okay, 50 days after that, we will celebrate uh, the Festival of Weeks. You may, know, uh, you may know it as Pentecost. On the seventh month, the month, uh, to give it a name, Tishrei, the first day of the month is uh, the blowing of the shofar, Yom Teruah. On the tenth day, Yom Kippur. And five days after that is Sukkot. And if you look at Leviticus chapter 23... Um, let's go to verse 37. And these are the feasts of the Lord. And the word feast means moed in Hebrew, which means an appointed time. Feasts are festivals. In this chapter, uh, as strong as number 4150, it means appointed time of the Lord. The feast of the Lord. Now these are the feasts of the Lord. These are the appointed times of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering, meat offering, sacrifice, a drink offering, everything upon his day. Beside the Sabbaths of the Lord, and beside your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offering, offerings which you gave unto the Lord. Okay, verse 39. Also, on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, as I just mentioned, there's the festival of tabernacles, or Sukkot, or booths, the festival of booths, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto the Lord, a appointed time. Seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath. On the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. Verse 40. And you shall take on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palms, palm trees, boughs of thick trees, willows of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. Uh, before I explain, let's go to Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 15, verse 13. And on the second day were gathered together the chief of the fathers of all the people, the priests and the Levites, unto Ezra the scribe, even unto understanding the words, I'm sorry, even to understand the words of the law, the Torah. And they found written in the law, the Torah, which the Lord had commanded by Moses, that the children of Israel should dwell in booths, 
in the feast of the seventh month. And they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount and fetch olive branches and pine branches and myrtle branches and palm branches and branches of thick trees to make booths as it is written. So it was customary, okay, per scripture, to bring out palms. Now, they recognized Yeshua as the Messiah, Moshiach, okay, as the Messiah, that he was the anointed one. And that's why when they thought he was, at that time, the, 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 the Messiah to come dwell with them which he is, but not at that time, not at the earthly time. In the end times, that's why it's prophetic that the, the festivals line up prophetically, okay, with the seasons, okay? The, they recognize that he is the Messiah, Baruch HaBab Hashem Adonai, and they put the palm branches down as was customary and pursuant to what is asked in Leviticus chapter 23 to put the palm branches down because he's going to come dwell with us except the timing was off because that's in the seventh month correct and Passover is in the first month and we know that Yeshua was coming down uh, from uh, Gethsemane across from the Kidron Valley to c celebrate and keep uh, the festival of uh, Unleavened bread and Pesach and uh, Festival of First Fruits. So, why do they call it Palm Sunday? Because the palms represent when Jesus was coming in. But it's not Palm Sunday, it was for Sukkot. Now, unless you teach this, unless, unless you observe it, you're really not going to have, you're not really not going to understand it in your spirit. And it's going to be difficult for them to teach, churches to teach, if they don't live it. So they've added something to Easter, which we know is not from the Lord in Scripture, and they added something else to it, Palm Sunday, which they can't explain also. Have you ever read a book or watched a movie and uh, the plot is very convoluted? And then they'll just throw in an actor or, an, or, or a character, I should say, or female or female, into the, into the plot. It, they don't have any significance to the plot. They're just another character because they don't know what else to do. They'll put a character in the plot. It doesn't change anything of the plot. And that's what it seems with Palm Sunday. They threw Palm Sunday in there but it has nothing to do with scripture, has nothing to do with the resurrection of Jesus Christ, has nothing to do with the Passover. It's actually, the timing is off. It's off by, it's either uh, off by seven months or early by five months. That That's up to you. But Palm Sunday has got nothing to do with scripture. So, let's get into some of the Passover. I'm not going to speak a lot about the uh, the uh, the plagues. Uh, the Exodus it takes up about and two thirds of the Torah. The getting out of Egypt and also going into your promised land. The majority of the Torah is about that. That's how important. The Lord wants us, when we say Egypt, I want you to say bondage, okay? And we all start in bondage when we come to the Lord, okay? The Lord didn't come for the righteous, he came for the unrighteous. We were all in bondage, so we are all in the spiritual Egypt. I have here the them walking through the Red Sea, uh, Moses over here, a cute little diagram. You see the horse being succumbed in the... I'm sorry, not the Red Sea, the Sea of Reeds, and we'll do that teaching a little bit later also. And then you have the sheep and whatnot. So, our spiritual exodus, as opposed to the one in, in the Bible, 
We all come to the Lord in bondage. We all come to the Lord in bondage. Um, just to step away from that, I read an article today where these, uh, I guess, Christian pastors, um, I guess back east, talked about how they've done hundreds and hundreds of exorcisms. And uh, they, are, they say that Christians cannot be possessed by demons. And <clears throat> which is sort of funny because I understand the concept of what they're saying, but everybody that comes to the Lord, okay, to, to say that a Christian cannot be possessed is, uh, uh, well, they haven't been in the room when I've been praying for people during exorcisms because definitely parts of your soul can be possessed. And that's why people come from darkness, bondage, Egypt, into the light to get healed, to get delivered. That's why Jesus was on the cross to heal us and to deliver us from demonic forces. If a Christian can't be possessed, they all came from darkness. Passover. Your Passover, the blood of Jesus that's going over you has got to walk in a way in accordance to, to Scripture. You can't ever do anything spiritually in your walk that walks outside of Scripture. Because if you do, that's rebellion. If you do, it's witchcraft. <clears throat> in Exodus chapter 6, verses 6 and 7, it says, And I will remove you, and I will rescue and deliver you, and I will redeem you. And I will release you. If you're not in bondage, if the enemy doesn't have possession of you, the Lord doesn't have to remove you. He doesn't ask, have to rescue and deliver you. He doesn't have to redeem you. He doesn't have to release you from these things. Now, we're not in a physical bondage. We are in a spiritual bondage when we come to the Lord. Some people might have demonic... Uh, 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 manifestations, some not. Some might just have the manifestations here. When I was drinking, you never just uh, attached to one thing. Okay? I was addicted to drugs, I was addicted to sex, I was addicted to gambling, I was addicted to many other things. In Matthew chapter uh, 12, uh, 43, 44, 45, is that when the spirit leaves, it'll come back seven times more wicked. Seven times. There's going to be an attachment of demons. So when you get delivered and adored, the Lord went to the cross for your healing and for your deliverance, you want to break that bondage. When you come out of Egypt, you go through the wilderness. When you go through the wilderness, there's a promised land. Now when Moses told, I'm sorry, when the Lord had Moses tell Pharaoh, let my people go, he wasn't just say, let my people go. He said, let my people go that they may serve me and worship me. Let me give you some of the scriptures. Exodus 5.1, I'm going to read uh, the highlighted parts. Let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Exodus 7.16, let my people go that they may serve me. Exodus 8.1, let my people go that they may serve me. Exodus 8.20, let my people go that they may serve me. Exodus 9.1, let my people go that they may serve me. Exodus 9.13, let my people go that they may serve me. Exodus 10, 3, let my people go that they may serve me. One of the problems when people come to the Lord is that, yes, the Lord has set me free, but they forget the second part of that. And even when you're growing up, as I was, 
you hear about, they say that Moses told, them, told Pharaoh, let my people go. But the most important part of that is the Lord is saying, so that they may worship me, that they may serve me. A lot of people get saved. They say, yes, thank you, Jesus. I love you, God. But they forget to serve him. God did not bring them out of darkness into the light so they could figure out how to go back to darkness and not get arrested this time or be better at sin. Oh yeah, I thank God for this and I thank Jesus for that, but do I have to live everything according to God? Can I still have a life? Now you can justify that and many Christians do justify themselves like that. God wants me to have a life. No, God wants you to serve him. If you're just thinking of this natural life, it's easy to understand why you're just worried about keeping up with the Joneses and the baseball games and the basketball games and the politics. But you need to pierce, literally as the Lord was pierced, pierce the veil of time and look to the future and that's what we're really here for, to serve the Lord. In the book of Revelation, the book Revelation, okay, it means to be naked, to, to, to be exposed. It says the revelation of Jesus Christ, apocalypse. Jesus Christ isn't going to be exposed. We are going to be exposed for Judgment Day. And people are so worried about eschatology in the last, last days and what they're going to do. Each person has their own last day. And everybody should be concerned about taking their last breath and what they're going to do in their last breath. That is your last time. What are you? Are you prepared for the afterlife, eternal salvation or eternal damnation. So when I got one, two, three, six, seven times, the Lord said, let my people go that they may serve me. When you say, or you have people say, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Now it's time to get to work. Now it's time to work for him. Because if you don't serve the Lord, the devil's going to take care of take him out. If not, kill him, beat him up. It's not all about drugs and alcohol, but I've known enough drug addicts that never overdosed in their addiction. They come to the Lord, they get cleaned, and that time span, span could be months or years. And then because they do not serve the Lord, or they weren't taught to serve the Lord, they go backwards and they backslide. This time, they overdose and die. Why? Because the Spirit leaves and will come back seven times more wicked than the first. The church in the United States of America is failing its people by not teaching them the festivals, the fullness of the festivals, the wholeness of the festivals. Let my people go that they may serve me. Now, when that feast in the wilderness is in 50 days, and that's what transpires at Mount Sinai, the marriage between God and his people. And not just the Jewish people or the Israelites, all people. He said there will be one law for the homegrown and the sojourner. And if you want to uh, apply Romans and they were grafted in, the Gentiles are grafted in to the 12 tribes. The 12 tribes are not grafted in to the Gentiles. 
That scripture says salvation is of the Jews. The foundation is that. In Exodus chapter 4, verse 22, let me just read it. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, the Lord says, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, my firstborn. That's the personal relationship. People wonder, why is Israel so special? Why is the state of Israel so special in the Middle East right now? Because the Lord says in Exodus chapter 4, verse 22, Tell Pharaoh, who is the head of Egypt and the head of bondage, Satan to you and me. Tell Satan that whoever you are, you can say your name, because I, I'll say my name. The Lord is saying that Mike is my son. Mike is my firstborn. That's that personal relationship. Going back to the, to, to, to the uh, Torah, a lot of people have misconceptions that, that Jesus Christ is only in the New Testament. Jesus Christ was yesterday, today, and forever. Always. And that personal relationship has always been. People say, well, Christianity is not about a religion, it's about a relationship. You're darn right it is. And it started with Adam, and Noah, and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Moses. We spoke to face to face. You can't get any more personal than that. And it's time for believers in Christ and their pastors and their teachers to get away from the tradition that we saw founded in Constantine, pagan traditions like Easter, and start going back to the root of the Word of God. The truth, I do not have the luxury to lie to people. John 4, 23 and 4, 24 says, God the Spirit should be worshipped in, worship in spirit and in truth. I don't care if people like me. I know this bugs a lot of people when I say this. I don't care if people like me or not. I'm going to be obedient to the Lord. That's the thing that matters more than anything. To God be the glory. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I don't seek approval by man. Remember a couple of weeks ago, we read that in 1 Samuel. Saul sought approval of the people. And because Saul sought approval of the people in, in, Saul, in uh in chapter 15, instead of being obedient and destroying Amalek and all the Amalekites and everything, all the animals and everything else, the Lord says, I will tear your kingdom away from you. I do not want the Lord to tear my kingdom away from me. That he says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 19, okay, those that teach the commandments and keep them Okay? will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And if people mock me or don't like me here on earth, that's okay. Because I'm not going to listen to them. I'm not going to have the, the Lord tear my kingdom from me. In Ezekiel chapter 33, let me just give you some scriptures. Because I am the watchman for my ministry. And if you're watching this scripture, this, and I know a lot of people don't because this isn't everybody's cup of tea. But if you are, I'm your watchman. Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 1 through 9. Again, the, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and send him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword 
Come and take him away. His blood, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take, a, take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at the, my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die if thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, the wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at thy hand. Verse 9. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, and if he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. I am not going to be responsible for somebody else's soul. Your blood is on your hand. My responsibility is to teach your souls, teach you the Word of God, explain it to the Word of God. It's up to you to act on that. Amen.